So what we often say, like <laughs> humans are still going to have like certain skills that AI can't do. I'm a little skeptical. I don't. I got to be honest. Long, though. That's, I, that's, that's me too. Yeah. So I'm just curious from your guys' perspectives. What are those things? Welcome back, everyone, to the Geeks, Geezers, and Googleization Show, the home of Googleization Nation, where we talk with HR and business thought leaders about the crazy shift going on all around us and explore the disruptive convergence of technology, business, and people. Here are your hosts, Ira Wolf and Jason Coffin. Welcome back, everyone, to Geeks, Skeezers, and Googleization. This is a very special episode, and I'm thrilled to have you with us as part of Googleization Nation. For this episode, I want you to imagine four podcast co-hosts walking into a bar, but this is no joke and no ordinary meetup. My co-host, Jason Cochran, and I teamed up with the most dangerous duo of Chad and Cheese, Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman, for the very first time. We knew this was a rare opportunity and we weren't about to let it slip away. So we plugged in our microphones and recorded our conversation. Trust us, you won't want to miss a single minute of this epic episode. Get ready to dive in and discover what can happen when these four podcasters come together to reimagine the future of work. It's time to buckle up. Enjoy. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about? So what was the talk at Unleash? What what were some of the hot topics that you guys were talking about with yeah, leaders? Build, buy, or partner was one of the things that we talked about because of all, everything that's happening in tech, chat GPT, I mean, all that fun stuff. So that was one of the things that we talked about. But, I mean, we literally did 10-plus interviews, so pick a topic. Yeah, I mean, I think if there were themes uh, at the – so we have a dichotomy of – your knowledge workers are getting laid off to a certain degree, tech workers, um, which I think is inevitably going to be a good thing because they'll all start companies that hire a bunch of people and get a bunch of money. So mm -hmm. I think that's inevitably going to be a good thing. And then you have still a, a high level of, of um, stress around seasonal, hourly, frontline type workers. And their, their stress is automation and how quickly and do we automate many of the jobs of the frontline workers. So I think if, if you looked at, for me, like a trend was looking at knowledge base and the challenges they're having, as well as the frontline workers and the trends on that side of the aisle as well. In addition to that, uh, we still have a war in Europe. Uh, we have mounting tensions globally. We have an election coming up next year. So a lot of things going on in the fringes Plenty of things that are to impacting, talk about. <laughs> impacting uh, <laughs> impacting hiring layers shall we say yes layers it's an onion that we peel <laughs> back so, and so it what, makes you cry every time you it peel cry, it yes. back so what what's it what was the general mood i mean are, are were, were people still holding back i mean is it fearful where where the economy is going to go uh or is it hey we're going to take a step back but after that we're going to have a, a big opportunity i feel largely like we're in a bubble like we're hearing about inflation, we're hearing about all these things sort of uh, macroeconomics that are that are struggling. And we keep hearing but we're recession. we're still hiring like a mother. I yeah. mean, we are still, we're not investing in companies in our space as much, but we, we don't stop hearing about people still need people to serve food, to take care of patients, to uh, st you know, store warehouse goods and services and deliver them to people. Like at a very basic level, Employment is really strong while we hear so much in the news that things are going wrong. So hopefully mm -hmm. that continues. Yeah. But so, I think I think uh, a lack us. of funding is good, though, because we had way too we had we had a sugar oh, rush drunken. on on funding. <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, there was so they, we, we, they, it was horrible. Right now, I think we're going to get an opportunity to see these startups actually perform or get eaten up or just die, which is exactly what we need. We had way too many startups, too much noise, too much out there that yeah. needs to be filtered. But is HR tech kind of lost in the tech bubble or the tech collapse uh, You know, in the technology industry? But the reality is, as you said, I mean, there's a shortage of people. Yeah. Um, there is no out. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
most people m most people don't know this, but you know, up until for the last 40 years, we've had two million new bodies, not qualified bodies, but two million new people, <laughs> millennials, baby boomers, even Gen X, come into the workforce every single year. Yeah. Uh, and we had immigration on top of that. For the next 20 years, we're going to have less than 500,000 new people from uh, Gen Z and Alpha and no immigration. So there, there literally is no people coming into the workforce to replace this. So we are going to continue to have shortages. But HR tech seems to still be focused on the old practices and falls into the tech bubble. What happens? Isn't this an opportunity, though, to kind of disrupt and transform where we're headed, how we're going to deal with people? New opportunity. But their, their heads are still stuck up their butts. <laughs> I got four words for you, Ira. Chat GPT. Uh, if there was one theme at the conference, <laughs> I think one of those was, was an acronym. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I was I was digging into my inner uh, in living <laughs> color from back in the day. Um, Chat GPT, AI, all these things are going to disrupt what we're going to do. It's going to disrupt companies that currently do what Chat GPT or other AI. Uh, technologies can do. It's going to disrupt a ton of companies, create a bunch of new companies, um, and and we're going to have a good time talking about all of those for sure. And with Chat GPT is Auto GPT now. It's like what could possibly top Chat GPT? Now it's Auto GPT, oh, which sit is back basically and watch. Yeah. yeah, like here, yeah. here's the project I want you to work on. Crazy. You put in the parameters, and then it goes and does it. And I heard this crazy story, nightmare scenario with it that just happened to somebody. They put a project in front of chat or uh, uh, Auto GPT. Uh -huh. It ran into a wall, a problem that it couldn't solve. Mm -hmm. So what does it do? Kill it all the like, people. Kills all the people. That's right. <laughs> it starts the AI apocalypse. It kills kill everybody. everybody. <laughs> if you're listening to the show, you're one of the few ICBM remnants of humanity that's <laughs> left. Seek refuge in Indianapolis, Indiana. That's the only reason we're surviving. <laughs> Indianapolis is a refuge. No, it actually. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it actually went out and it tried to secure a contract with somebody on TaskRabbit uh -huh. who had expertise to solve the specific problem it couldn't solve. So it posed as its human and was negotiating a contract with this person. The TaskRabbit contractor sends the contract over to the human and the human's like, what is this? What's going on here? And it unpeeled the layers and realized auto GPT is running. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, dovetailing on that, there was, a, there was another one is what happens when uh, because of it, chat GPT is based on all the information that's out there. So it reads an economics book and it reads, <laughs> reads a psychology oh, great. book. Just what we need. And, and it we reads a try, psychology book. We should double book. down on trickle down economics. Yeah. And, <laughs> well, it, re it reads about economics and it reads about and finance. Yes. And it reads about Milton Friedman or some it, stupid and behavior, like yeah. behaviors, uh -huh. uh, psychology. Uh, so now it can negotiate with you based on your public profile. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you have all this. Book, it looks at all your feeds, how how you behave, how you respond to things. What's your outlook? So, and so think it, about that in our space, right? AI will be able to look at your profile, where you've worked in before, where you've worked before, what your title was what the average salary of that title is based on the years that you were there yeah. and come up with some sort of a salary that it thinks you'll be taking because of your past. It won't happen. Or, or because, how about interviewing because you? Because salary transparency is going to get rid of all of that, okay? Yeah. So that's, that's a non-starter. Carry but, on. But how about inter <laughs> just interviewing you? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a lot smarter than a lot of people who. Yeah. Are but it may come up with a salary based on the in aggregate standardization. Well, to, that that makes yeah, sense. That makes but sense. but right. yeah, but it has to also take a look at all the uh, people that you're currently employing. So yeah, I mean, they, they, it could happen. There's no question. But back to your original question, until HR gets a fucking spine, a spine, and learns that business is what runs everything that they do, right? right. What, what they're looking at every day is, oh, wait a minute, my whole life is predicated on this new opening or onboarding or, or what have you, right? No. If you understand the actual businesses that you serve, sales, marketing, you can talk to the C CEO and CTO about their business, then you can get more budget. Why? Because they understand that without you right now, before ChatGPT, right now, they need people 
to ideate, to create, pro to create product, to sell product, to customer customers. service right. product, to be able to, to be able to expand wallet share, right? To do any of that, you need people. HR, the limpest of all departments, they go into the corner, they put their thumb in their mouth and they get in the fetal position. We need to be stronger. Were you hearing any cool stories? Less limp, that's right. Were you hearing any cool stories how ChatGPT is being used by HR leaders currently? HR leaders, not as much as, as staffing organizations and startups. We see yeah. because they're more innovative and they're not afraid. Once again, HR and TA, for the most part, they're afraid because they might you know, trip over some compliance, like tripwires that might be there. The rest of the, the, everybody else is out and they're out in force using it. Yeah, and to add on that, I think uh, writing job descriptions is an easy one. We're seeing vendors integrate that into their solutions. We're seeing some of the, the basic sourcing, the first contact, if you will, of candidates being automated, um, rejection letters, things that you would normally do content-wise are being um, automated by ChatGPT. And a lot of it is just not even just vendors doing it, but just people on their own are figuring out where to go, what to put in, uh, how it works. I mean, this thing has, what, more users than anything else that came before it in a shortened period of time. So a lot of people are using this and, and messing around with it and coming up with their own solutions. I think also interestingly, Chad and I have talked about our, on our show, how job seekers are being creative around chat GPT and creating profiles and replying to tons of jobs and passing pre-screening questions based on chat GPT. Um, passing intelligence. tests. Yeah, oh, passing yeah. full pre -screening scale test. tests. Actual copy tests, like actual yes. writing copy that's doing better than most of the applicants that are humans. Well, I mean, it counts on your resume if you can write the prompt, right? You can exactly. engineer right. the prompt, prompt for ChatGPT. I mean, that it's right. real, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the fastest growing yeah. profession. Yeah. But but the thing that you mentioned there, I, I still remember so many times Kevin Grossman, who's a friend of ours in Canada Experience, would talk about how many times people would apply and then they never hear anything back. So at least with AI, it's yeah. like, are you actually getting a rejection letter letting you know? That's a huge step forward, right? To actually get some which kind of communication sad. back, which is sad, it but is it's actually getting done. It's sad because we, we the, the problem is that, and again, this goes back to the uh, Ira's initial question around HR. We have never been able to scale past the resume and the fax machine. As soon as we were able to start getting resumes electronically, couldn't scale since. We have not been able able to scale since. Hence. All of these these black uh, black holes that exist. So, so if we go back three years, the, the the pandemic revealed all the vulnerabilities of a company, and then it created opportunity, realizing what remote work could look like. Yeah. The technology, people were unprepared. So, ChatGPT and a, and and just just AI in general, because now it put it into our hands. Didn't it just roll pull back? I mean, just pulled off the band aid, exposed all the vulnerabilities of of HR, because we're, I've been in HR for 27 years, but you know, ran, been in business for 40 years. And you've only been in therapy for 25, <laughs> for those 27 years. For, for all, for 45. <laughs> the, the challenge is, is that we're still talking about people faking resumes, and this just put it on steroids. This is when Chad goes into his Web3. Uh, yes. CV wallet. Says, Watch yes. out, baby. Right. Watch out. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's the transition where, where people were saying, well, okay, we're, we're trying to digest chat GPT. We're trying to figure this out. Just give us yeah. time. We're going to think about it. Yeah. We're going to put it on next year's strategic plan. It, it, tech is moving so fast, you can't put it in next year's anything. It has to be next week's conversation. And, and again, going back to the HR is so slow and so spineless, we've got to be able to react. We've got to be more nimble. And I'll, I'll revert back to one of the, the in, uh, interviews that we had with Jeff Lackey, who used to be over all of C CVS hiring. 90% of his budget came from other departments because he went back out to them with business cases and said, look, Wait, you want those salespeople to get hired? You want those customer service? You want this, that? We need funding. 
we don't have enough funding to be able to sustain. So your top five positions right now for us is your top one, maybe half position. So if you can fund us, then maybe we can talk. So he went back to the business to talk about these things, right? We need to think about HR in an entirely different way and we need to be more nimble. He was nimble and he taught his team how to be nimble. We have to. You know, I, I, I joke on the podcast about one day we'll have robots interviewing robots. He's really not and, joking. And no, one, <laughs> no one will see anyone until they show up for the first day of work. And right. we're, we're sadly going to a time where job we seekers are there. automating, companies are automating, and uh, robots are interviewing robots. Yeah. But you guys brought up a perfect use case for NFTs, right? The non-fungible tokens. Like so many times, I'm a big proponent. I'm on the bandwagon with you on Web3. Uh -huh. But so many times the detractors would be like, NFTs, there's no use case for them. Just as long as you don't call them NFTs, I think you're you're, <laughs> you're right. okay, right? Yeah. Just like you don't call Proof it blockchain, right? You don't call it blockchain. You don't you're call like, it crypto. Oh, okay, right. I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. It's like here's a product. Here's what the product does. Oh, that's fucking cool. It's NFTs and it's blockchain. Oh, wait a minute, give me away from that thing. Yeah. Right. But I mean, the use case you just brought it up is it's going to be really easy for people to fake things yeah. that they contributed towards their experience and stuff like that with yep. AI. Yep. So there's got to be like proof of authenticity of the things yeah. that you actually contributed toward. And then also you can't have guys like Joel that are trying to pose as Drake coming up with music that sounds exactly <laughs> like Drake. Gotcha. Uh, you know, so there's got to be this proof of authenticity on the artistic side of things too with what's being Fortunately, done. I was born to look like Drake. So the voice <laughs> isn't that big of a, of a leap for me. So let's get into this. LinkedIn has recently partnered with Clear to verify profiles. Did you do it, by does the that way? Mean, does that mean I can get on my air? My, my, my I'm not flight looking for faster. a job, so I don't really give a shit. Uh, but <laughs> some people, some people do. So are you are you bullish, bearish, hold on LinkedIn verifying profiles through Clear? Yeah, I don't trust them, and it's because I don't have any. That's stock a bearish. In I'm guessing it's selfish. You're selling. Bearish. You're selling LinkedIn. Okay. How about uh, Ira, what about you, Ira? What do you think? Using LinkedIn. For, to verify well, clear Ver profile clear. verification through blockchain and or LinkedIn slash clear. What else is out there? Anything? Well, I, I think that's the direction, but it goes back to we have no guardrails in place. Yes. So so part of it is is utilizing that to verify it, to make sure people are actually who they are. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. I mean, when it goes back sure. to what we were just talking about with resumes. It was just the Do you real have your blue you. check, Ira? Do you have I, your blue check? I do. All right, there you go. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it means, it it means, means he submitted his ID to, to Elon Musk. So it means something. <laughs> means so. nothing. Yep. And I went through the LinkedIn but, process. Right. That's why I'm but, that's why but I'm there's no guard. guard. We're there's going no, towards a blue check ecosystem. But there's no where, guard. But there's no guardrails. I'm not saying Twitter. But people are going to need some sort of verification, I think, yes. well, going forward, whether so it's blockchain, whether I, it's NFT, I whether it's... I think the guardrails come in with Europe, because Europe is actually setting the stage for the entire world for a lot of this technology with, right. with guardrails. GDPR was, and, and what, from what we're hearing, it was really just a mechanism to slow the American machine down mm -hmm. because we were so mm -hmm. far ahead of Europe. And now we have to think about, oh, shit, if we want to sell things in Europe, pretty pretty large, you know, market <laughs> with 44 plus countries. So how do you... What do you think about that? Compliance, guardrails, do you think that Europe is really going to lead the way since the U.S. is really just focused on cash as opposed to how it treats its people? Yeah, I'm not sure leading the way is the solution because we're still globalized. I mean, there's still com there's countries that aren't going to participate. There's businesses aren't thinking. Yeah, but if and, and how do you do it with an enterprise company? Let's I'm say Germany. Let's say Germany does. The biggest GDP in... Why don't you pick Germany? The biggest, Why? the biggest, Why? the right. biggest Why, GDP no offense, in Rathskeller, Europe, we and you. we're here at the Raskeller drinking German beer. <laughs> anyway, anyway, if one of those countries does it, it's much like California putting in putting in um, regulation. Right, the rest of the country really has to fall in line. Right. Well, we we all know that Reddit is the one hundred percent source of all truth. <laughs> <laughs> and what I saw on Reddit, you didn't know Joel was Q, did you? <laughs> oh, you're Q? He's an on. <laughs> you guys are famous. <laughs> but yeah, on, on Reddit, they were talking about this subject, and what was really fascinating about it was how many users of ChatGPT have said that basically the governor has been put on ChatGPT already. They'll put in the same types of questions or prompts, uh -huh. 
and it'll give a response like, I'm not qualified to answer that question or to put some kind of a disclaimer <laughs> out there and it won't actually answer it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we are kind of in this weird space of we do want it to advance. We want it to be able to help us innovate and create new product services, solve problems. But then we also have this problem of, yeah, is it going too fast where it's invading privacy? Or is it stepping beyond its bounds of what it actually has competence in? Is it actually fabricating and creating oh, false information? Definitely fabricating. <laughs> right? It's, yeah. You can create the regulations and the compliance and the guardrails. Mm -hmm. But then you have China and Russia. So how do you... How do you force enforce compliance? You stop them doing business in your country. That's how you do it. That's the only way that you can. That's the only way you can force China or Russia right. to do anything that you want them to do is ban is TikTok. Chuck <laughs> is is choke off the cash. That's it. That's it. Ban but you talk. You, you, oh, uh, you talk about no backbone. You've got yes. Congress. <laughs> I mean, when they're when they're trying to figure out how Facebook still makes money. Yes. And don't realize they changed their name and they have a no, new business model. Yes. So I think they might go back to Facebook, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Someone from the audience brought up a good, a good question. <laughs> does, <laughs> does, yes. Does all, yes. This, Perfect. does all this confusion and <laughs> ID, ID verification <laughs> lead us back to a time where we just hire who we know, like personal friendships, contacts, who knows who, which throws in a whole other diversity, inclusion, and equity yeah. challenge uh, to that. But do we go back to who we know? Like, we don't know what the bots are telling me. What is AI telling me? I'm just going to hire the dude I went to school with, and they know somebody that, that wants to be an, an intern. Then organizations have better hire people that are is really well Is it still well not what you know? It's who like you, know. you Like you. What about me? Like you guys. They need to hire people like you guys. Yeah, and it knows everybody in the dudes. industry. So yeah. get a podcast. Middle-aged white yeah, dudes. For, yes. Right? Yeah. yeah uh, for, it, for white dudes. It, <laughs> it could be. It, I mean, that, that could be the fallback position, but I don't think that's ever the answer. And, I, and, and most of these com companies are making record profits. And for them to say that I can't efficiently go after, use the money that you have, go diversify your workforce, and then build from there. One of the things that we did... Like, don't want to get too political, but back in the 80s is we started cutting off funding from uh, employers putting money back into their employees. Trickle down economics. We were like, hey, here's all these tax cuts. You're going to put it back in the market, which they, they never really did. Instead, right back then, they were incentivized to drive and build talent pipelines within their own organization. Today, we don't do that. We talk about talent pipelines. There's no company that has a talent pipeline that exists. Very few, put it that way, right? So we need to get back to actually building talent pipelines within our communities. And then our, then our companies start to look what our communities look like, right? And I mean, that it, whether it's policing, whether it's just Fortune 500 companies, we need to get back to that. And when we stop focusing on, quote unquote, shareholder value, and we focus on the long-term existence of an organization, then, then I think we, you know, then I think we have something. Going back to your question, Joel, yep. is, is it, it, do we move back toward human connections of who we know because we're comfortable with it? Oh, yeah. But it wasn't very good before. I mean, we, we hired people that we were comfortable with, and, yeah. and we, we knew we, we got what we got, but it was a low common denominator. Yes. And just as over the last three years, we've talked about how it, we can't build relationships. You can't build cultures through a screen yeah. because yeah. there's no serendipity, that we, we're just no creativity, but that's only because most people don't have the ability to do it. Yeah. So yeah. part of it is, is we... Re, do companies revert back to that just as they are now is bring everybody back to the office because that's the only place you can have innovation growth, go. serendipity yep. have you have you seen have you seen the new upwork commercial of course yes. okay so the, so the zombie grandpa yep. who can't die because he's afraid of his company going under because all he could do is hire his kids and his grandkids yep. and they were Shit for yeah. talent, yeah. but then he third, went to, then third he went generation to, businesses. Yeah, then he goes. Right. To, then he goes to Upwork, and he's like, "I've got all these talented people all over the world." Right? Yep. That's yep. exactly what Iris right. is talking about. So, yeah. I mean, we keep going back to this lowest common denominator. What we're comfortable with, going yeah. back to normal, which yeah. we can't do because it wasn't very good before. 
So the whole well, we hiring have, process. We have CEO after CEO talking about we need to go back to what it was. We need to go back to the office. We need to go back to a. That's because they're all old culture. white dudes. <laughs> and they all, and they and most of them have ownership in commercial real estate, which is a, a side issue. But <laughs> where are you with could be something remote hybrid? Get your ass back in the office. Where where do we go from here? All of the above, and well, that that's actually it's one of the parts we talk about. So we we. I, the conversations we're, we're talking about in the wrong context. It's not about hybrid, in office or, or remote. It's about flexible. Is right. people want flexibility? Autonomy. They're, they're not and yep. flexibility. Yeah. So they're not opposed to coming back to the office. When you come back to the office, come back to the office because there's a purpose to come back to the office because it's the absolutely the absolute only place where we can function or do something. But just. But I, I, we, I spoke last week and two weeks ago in Missouri, and one of the people shared to us, she said, you know, I went into an office yesterday and walked down the corridor, and there were 10 offices. It was, it was a marketing HR kind of business area. Uh-huh. And no one was there. And she walks down the office and she hears voices, and all the doors were just marginally cracked. And everybody was talking in their offices. To them, to each other on Zoom. So they were in an office, <laughs> on a screen call, sitting at their desk, talking to each other. There is no reason in the world uh. to say I had to hire child, I had to find childcare, I had to leave somebody, I had to commute an hour and a half yeah. to come in this meeting to sit in my office to talk to somebody in the next office because everybody talked through a screen because everybody was busy and they don't have to pay 100% yeah. attention. But if there was a reason to come back. There, there, there was a really, I think this is a brilliant model, and it's from Cushman and Wakefield. Uh, and we just talked to, we just interviewed uh, Brian Bertholdt a couple weeks ago on it. And, it. and they have a motto called experience per square foot. And it looked at productivity was number one. Uh-huh. They looked at the productivity of people wherever they are. It looked at collaboration. It looked at employee well-being. Uh, it looked at community. Uh, and it looked at communication. So those were the five metrics. And they put it into this measurement of experience per square foot. And they said, where, where is it the highest r- value number? The yeah, highest value num- delivery. You know, My brain what, hurts. Wait, no, what, where My they're playing hurts. Juice Newton, Morning Angel. That's where <laughs> the experience is. <laughs> yeah, that's where I want to work. That's, right. that's the soundtrack yeah. so, of this so podcast. So part of it, I mean, it's, it's an interesting model, and it puts it in a different perspective. But where, do, where does that happen? And that's the problem of thinking... Are people more productive in the office or remote or hybrid? And it, it still mounts to flexibility. Is what, because even the four-day work week, which yeah. is you know, now regenerated for the 15th time. So the four-day work week. I still wear week, my khakis on Friday, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Casual Friday. <laughs> That's not very. And they productive. still have wing juice on them. <laughs> they still that, have the pleats. That's, that's very. <laughs> that's go not, all the way down. Yeah, anyway. th- that's not flexible for people <laughs> who have. Th- they have a, a, a working spouse, and they have to be in the office Tuesday. So do I have to be in the office Tuesday? We have to find childcare for one day. Yeah, that's dumb. That that's not flexible, which means you piss somebody off, and they don't want to do it. So what's flexibility? How how do you create flexibility? And that goes back to HR and their alignment or business and the alignment with HR, what's the measure? What are you trying to accomplish? How do you measure productivity, communication, collaboration, employee well-being? How do you put all that stuff into a mix? So I am, am I hearing you say work, work from, like going back to the office is bullshit. The story a you mandate? just told, no. the story you just told was it's bullshit. If it's a mandate, it is because- When is it not? Companies need metrics. They need the right, why, why are you bringing people back? What's the purpose of bringing people what back to the office? What metric does that work favorably? Right. What, what, what can you accomplish? What are you going to accomplish by bringing people back to the office, mandating it, that you can't accomplish if they work somewhere we, else? We shouldn't be... Fo- okay, so first and foremost, Henry Ford came out with the 40-hour week, week in the 1920s, Okay. That's still where we're at. We're focusing on the amount of time that we're taking or that we're quote unquote giving as opposed to the outcomes. I don't give a shit if, and and I didn't care when I was building teams, if it took you 20 hours to get to the actual project, you know, timeline or not, it, it didn't matter. 
And when we start to get into that old 1920s nine mindset of right. the, oh, we've got to be, we've got to be there. And this is manufacturing. We're, most of us aren't in manufacturing now because America doesn't make shit. So now 40 hours a week doesn't mean anything. Okay. So, so here's, here's the tie. So it's not only that. It's, it's not only when people, flexibility yeah. is not only where people work. It's about when they work mm -hmm. and right. what are they doing when they're working. And how much they get paid. Right. And. But I can't tell you how many times that we talk about flexibility also comes about when people get paid. So pay, oh, yeah. Yeah. day pay, going back, you have hourly workers, you have senior leaders. He just flipped it who, on us, you yeah, see that? Who, 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 who senior <laughs> leaders. They went from Juice Noon to Smokey Robin. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit out of my own. I'm a little confused. <laughs> it's a Rathskeller playlist, by the way, guys. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, you Where have does Hasselhoff come on. <laughs> Jeez. So we have people. By the by the way, when we talk about day pay, getting paid, you know, hey, I work three days, but I've got a bill. I've got to go to the emergency Are room. Are we in I favor of day card. pay? Yeah, oh, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. yeah. Just making and, sure. And it'll never work because obviously it doesn't work for Fiverr and not work. And, <laughs> <It'll> never, and <laughs> since all the banks are basically yeah, we love being it, demolished. It'll never yeah, work, it, that's not how that's not how the cash society works either, all your tradespeople. Is that the objection I hear with that is that oh we asked our payroll company to do it and they say they can't. Or we asked our bookkeeper and it'll mess up or we asked our managers and it'll mess up our accounting. Okay. So the problem is, is that there is a demand for it. There's a purpose to it. There's, there's a reason that you can attract and retain employees if you offer that type of pay. That, yeah. hey, I've worked a week. Why don't I have to work another week? Because I'm all stressed out, and I don't have money to, pay my, my, to get my car out of the garage. I don't have time to take my kid to the doctor because I need cash. Yeah. Because the payroll system or the accounting system or the managers don't allow it to happen or cash flow yeah. so we, we keep going back to there are solutions out there that have been around for five ten years that companies just trip over their feet with policies and administration is go find another payroll company go find figure it out yeah. but if if you if we're giving you a way that will attract and retain people and and say hey the only reason i'm going to work for you is because i can get paid by the day I don't have to wait two weeks to buy groceries for my family or to pay right. or get my landlord off my back because I can get the, the money right. that, that I put in and earned already. And somebody comes up with the brainy idea is we can't do it because our HIRS system doesn't do it. Our payroll company says we can't do it. Our, our CFO says we can't do it. Get rid of them. Yeah. Change it. Fire them. Yeah, and get one that has brain. Bitcoin reserves. I mean, yeah. so that you, you know, know that for, they have the liquidity. For the last six years, I mean, you guys talk about TA all the time. I, I Did the crypto that space. king just say something? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. You know, the other part of this too. We're talking about the money side of it and where people work is when people work. And Yahoo just had a fascinating report that came out on millennials and Gen Zs. You know what the new nine to five preferred working hours are for millennials and Gen Z? Six p.m. to two a.m. Sign me up. More shocking is Yahoo still has flat. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> right. Breaking news. For, you Yahoo. heard that first, Yahoo. That's right. Yeah. Looking for a sponsor. But yeah, that absolutely just floored me that like the other part of this freedom is not just where you work, but when you work and that there's a lot of people that it based on their schedule. It shouldn't matter. That's what we need to get down to. Right. It is like, look, if I have goals I have to hit, right? Right. If I hit those goals... It doesn't matter when I work, how I worked. If I was at the strip club down the street, for God's sakes, I got done, right? If I'm coding while I'm having, you know, prime rib with, with cherry, it's okay. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think that's what this report was showing was that there needs to be that flexibility. Like yeah. if that's when they're saying those are their productive hours, when they deliver the most value for the company and it works the best in their schedule, why yeah. not? It's it, weird. They were like doing a rager, and then they went straight to work after the <laughs> same arguments right. going after the shift. Is that hey, we can't find somebody to 
we don't have enough nurses, the healthcare. I came from healthcare background. Yeah. So we don't have enough nurses, we don't have enough staffing, and we have a seven to three, a three to 11, but you do have people that can work hey, from 11 to, six, from 11 to six, 11 to six. But the, then the problem still goes back to, right. but how do we do the accounting? Is that we have my pterodactyl model eat that kind of food. Right. These are literally conversations have, that I've heard. They're all hourly anyway. It doesn't matter because- It does matter. It's, it's paid on hours, I it's how they schedule it. goes back to, but it goes back to what you said. <laughs> right. It's their policy is that we have- because my pterodactyl wouldn't eat that kind of food. Right. We, have, we have a template that says 7 to 3, 3 to 8, 11, or 3 to 11, 11 to 7. <laughs> and the fact is, is that we'll get a new template. By the way, when I retire- And I go, well, we check with our, our HRS system. <laughs> It doesn't allow that. Hours are hours. Well, yeah. That's one right. thing that hasn't that's changed during this entire workday. But that hours are hours. The only thing I heard is the strip club should that's be open 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any fears around uh, the second bank collapse with uh, First Republic yeah. when you're well, out and unleash? So here's, the, here's the biggest problem. Here's the biggest problem even before we get to unleash. The biggest problem was we were starting to come out of this, like Joel was talking about, like this bubble. We're starting to come out of this kind of like pensive, like do we spend money bubble? And then SVB throws all this fucking ice back in the water, which was getting nice and cozy, right? We're getting in the hot tub. It was feeling good. It was warming up. The bubbles were going. And boom, they threw ice in the motherfucker. So uh, we're, we're in that we're in that now rewarming. Jamie Diamond's feeling really good. Jamie Diamond's feeling really good about getting First Republic on a pretty cheap basis with all the protection from the FDIC. Still the smart guy. Get back in the office until he opens his bag. Get back in the office until he mandates everybody back. Yes, morale will not improve. Him and him and DJ meetings will continue until morale improves. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, Unleash was, I mean, it was it was a big show. Third year. Uh, yeah. That was, yeah, that was only big, big expo. Third year. Like, yeah. That was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was only a year. Yeah, we've got Rec Fest that's coming to It was big. Yeah, and then we've got Rec Fest that's coming to America this year, right? So, I mean, you know, we're, I think we're going to see a lot of growth. It just, can we keep the ice out of the water long enough? For, you know, for, uh, for some of these funders and some of these, and some of these, you know, uh, startups to be able to really just explode. Were there any Web three companies there? I don't think so. <laughs> Joel's over here. I think there was, He's got a story. There was. <laughs> There was one that actually did it in a, um, an announcement that week, and that's CV Wallet. That's out of the UK. So Richard and Beverly Collins are actually sold a company to Indeed, but it is now getting into Web3. But it is uh, it's a portable CV, which allows all of the which allows all of the credentialing, all of the background checks, all stuff that actually stays with me. background check on me, right? So I get to keep that. It's a background check on me, right? So I get to keep that as I go from company to company. I see this as first as I have my information. So I see this as is a evolution. We'll see if we can actually get adoption. So does it support so NFTs? Vendors, I'm sure it does. Yes. So was there? So if there weren't vendors there, was there, was there conversation about Web three? I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think yeah, we're living in chat GPT. Yeah, well, I mean, we're still yeah, focused yeah, on yeah, how do we get out of this mess? But chat GPT shadow. Yes. Right. Yes. But here's the thing, though. You got to remember. How much did we talk about cloud computing? We did just for a minute, there, it was like, oh, this is the coolest the thing in the world. And then like white it just wasn't there, but it took over the world scenes, because it's right? actually kind of like same, a white labeled solution that's happening behind the scenes, scenes right? Same, I'd see the same thing tech. happening with Web3. It could power some amazing yeah, it's tech. Right now. But it's not something we're talking about. Really yeah, no it's, reason it's fascinating right now. Web3 was really big on Steam, and then AI came on the scene. Like you said, Joel, it's like it kind of just... Yes. And they closely associate, yeah. So they're sort of... Uh, 
guilty by association. Web3, blockchain, and I fear that Web3, blockchain, crypto NFTs, like, do they all get lumped in the same thing? Be, and game, be careful, don't touch. Right now, I, think I think it's a long game where all this stuff plays out. But for right now, I think there's a lot of fear and certainly doubt around anything. There's blockchain, not crypto, and so 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 right there's, there's not a, there's there's not a massive. Yeah. So, so is it not happening right low. now, or you is it just that like people like are let's uh, lay low? If you get into this, passive. like I mean, your uh, CV wallet, thing. it's the long game. I mean, it's you're game, right? you're not flipping this thing in 24 months. It's it's the long game as far as I'm concerned. That's the thing, because everybody wants to. Just everybody somebody's going to want to buy. It. That's the thing, though. because everybody and wants to. Everybody it. wants to do a resume. Decades. Decades. And, this is just and we've been bitching about it. Buy. It goes uh, back to then certain decades. This is just another company I can buy and sell and acquire. Is it is it blockchain? Is it above? They're going to have to convince people that. How, CV wallet, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to convince people that LinkedIn. CV wallet that Web three is different than LinkedIn. Otherwise, you're just LinkedIn. putting your resume and profile. And that I means you can't just sell it to a company. Indeed Otherwise, you're just putting your resume and profile. I can't apply company. for a job on Indeed with my LinkedIn profile. I can't apply for a job in all of these other places outside of Indeed. Right? So you're talking about. Can you apply on Indeed with my CV wallet? Yeah. I mean, that's well. That's the whole thing. Is that if you can, if you can create these things, and LinkedIn doesn't create, Indeed doesn't. Create, but you have a third party do it, and they have these integrations with assessment companies and whatnot. The the practicality of something like that happen goes up tremendously. As soon as Indeed builds something like that, you're going to have half the market not want to do it. Like most job boards will have apply with your if it works. Apply to if it works. <laughs> if it works, but they, <laughs> I mean, they have it. So I, I like, I think Bitcoin is beyond the promise of blockchain. Is right. Bitcoin is beyond any government but you're missing government, any government, but you're government missing currency. But you're missing it's, something. It's beyond your bank. Right. So Indeed has a bunch of fake ass profiles. Right. So what's the difference between getting fake ass? I mean, it's just it's one of those things, right? where, so so I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where if something that's credentialed, that's something that is you know is real and it's portable for us as a user, it just makes sense, right? So there, there, there's a a messaging problem, a narrative problem, as, as, as you say every week for Web3, blockchain, and crypto, right? I agree 100%. They just need kick-ass marketing. So let's go back to I mean, something you just said just popped in my head. So you go back and, and we figure this out. Let's say the wallet becomes the new resume, and we have a better way than a LinkedIn profile. How do companies utilize that to hire people that that one is how do you verify the skills that you can build any resume? Well, they're verified within the actual uh, assessments and the assessment vendors in your wallet. If the assessments are measuring what's important. Well, I mean, I came from more than measuring. Or they're yeah, reputable. Yeah. Right. But, but people are still hiring. And I came from this world. Yeah. I mean, people hire on personality and behavioral styles. And, Which is sad, and all yes. This, right. Yes, yeah. So how do you hire people that actually have the ability one is the knowledge and the wisdom yes. and the ability to apply it. Yes. So I can take all the courses and skills and have 30 years of experience, but how do you verify that I actually could apply and I'm willing to apply? Two different questions. Testing simulations. Those are the biggest, those are the biggest keys. And they're, they're but great. they have to be part of the web. Oh, God, that yeah. Port, oh God, yeah. Well, that's part so, of the credentialing So you're part. demonstrating yes. your ability. It's not that I just went to school and, and I clicked this off and I had 10 years exactly. of experience and I, and I met all and, my goals and, for and 10 yeah, years. And, and Jenny did all my tests for me. Yes. <laughs> so, right. so what? So. We often you know Jenny too. <laughs> she's from. I think block. she's friends yeah. with charity, isn't she? <laughs> she's friends with charity. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny's just short for generative AI. Right? <laughs> That's right. So what we often say too smart, Ira. Like <laughs> humans are still going to have like certain skills that AI can't do. I'm a little skeptical. I don't. Know I got to be honest. Long, though. That's, I, that's, that's me too. Yeah. So I'm just curious from your guys' perspectives. What are those things that nuance he, emotions? Uh, but I think that, but you I can't, think that can be taught. So that, that's interesting. And I can't remember where Feelings? I, that, yeah. I just read this yesterday. It could so be you fakes. can have compassion and, <laughs> and <laughs> empathy. I mean, granted, that's most of the girls I dated in, in yeah. college. <laughs> 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 so, so you, so a, I didn't care, and maybe most employers won't care. So that's one of the concerns, is that AI <laughs> in the future will not, th that we can't replicate human compassion and empathy. Yeah. But you can replicate the behavior. 
Yes. So it, Which, so what's the AI difference, though? may not feel. But what's the difference, Because most Ira? people do it r robotically now. Yes, that's so, what I mean. So you go, is how do I become more empathetic? It doesn't mean the person gives a sh uh, about yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the reality is, is they act like they do. Yes, like so, most managers. And, and, then, and yes. then the person has to have the, the ability to discern, are they authentic or not? Yeah. Which most people don't have that ability <laughs> to discern it because, oh, he gave me a paycheck and he really likes me. Uh, and he's a Browns fan, so he, <laughs> so, he must be fully. Yeah. Right, because we have something. In, we have oh, something are you a Browns common. fan? <laughs> I'm a Browns fan. Oh, 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 oh. you and Drew Carey. <laughs> yeah, you got something to say? Two of them. No, I'm a Colts fan, so I'm in misery too. <laughs> hey, I, I, I saw I saw Jim and met Jim so Brown when so, he was about six. Oh, <laughs> so I was listening to a, a podcast dozen. the other day, yeah. and it talked about military. It talked about right. military preparation, and it said that in military battles or or um, like war games, that AI will typically do whatever it takes to win the battle or the war. Yeah. So it will sacrifice soldiers in order t for the big picture to win the ultimate prize, which is the war. Whereas human beings would look at sacrificing people as maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe there's another way. Yeah. So to answer your question a little bit of like, yes, there is something to be said for human beings because we would look at that and say sacrificing humans isn't oh, just right. an algorithm. E Elon must these be people, AI then. These are people that yeah. live and breathe. Shall and we families, play a game? Yeah, so, yes. So that's War my, games, baby. That's, I think there is still nuance to being Yeah. So here's, uh, this is interesting. Yesterday on the way out here uh, on the shuttle, met a guy <coughs> looked like Space Shuttle. Of, yeah, no. <laughs> Space Shuttle. SpaceX. Uh, sort of, yeah. Parking shuttle. Um, Virgin Galactic. Went through the airport. Turns out he's Blue a three-star general. Blue Origin penis rocket. In, in charge Were you of in it? the head of the rocket? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and does it shoot you out when it gets to your destination? <laughs> Woody Allen stuff? <laughs> Woody Allen. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Ira. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no go worries. Ahead. So, and, <laughs> so he oversees, I mean, he oversees um, one of the defense uh, uh, organizations uh, with the government. Three, three and a half tr trillion dollars. 250,000 contracts. Um, I asked him, I said, hey, you want to be on the podcast? <laughs> love to, he's retiring. I said, love to get you on the podcast, talk about what the future is. Yeah. He said something like, what you're using for AI? His answer was that they're not focused on AI. He says the biggest value that they see is business intelligence, is where they're, where they're looking at AI is not in the strategy. Really? Is in analyzing all the data that they have to make better decisions leading up to how, where do they invest their money. But yeah, it but is, I mean, it, that would be ML and AI at the same point, right? Because right, you have all that not, data to not grind. To, not to how do you strategize, well, but it's not about the human life. It, it's about how do we make better decisions yeah. about how many F-16s do we really need and what other, and, and who's the yes. best vendors and how do, we, how do we have higher quality? The answer and is we not, need more f And they're not even That's using it. that yet. They're not even at that level of using the business intelligence to the level it should be. And now we're, we're already extrapolating out to uh, who's going to make that final decision about how many, you know, is this going to sacrifice more human lives? Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got a long way to go. And, and, you know, as we always say, where's Matthew Broderick and his monkey <laughs> when you need him? <laughs> I'm telling you. That's drones, a great point, though. Drones on the battlefield. That's what clears up this entire conversation. Yeah. Boston Dynamics <laughs> we're, with the little dog robots. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not worried about human lives when we got drones in the air and we got the little Boston Dynamic dogs with, with 240 M240s on there. What's rack. the dog in New York City Police Department? Is it Rover? I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. 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 Police Rover dogs. Pooch. But, I mean, that's a, that's a really fascinating point with sometimes having – like, we've got a ton of information, but we're really terrible as humans a lot of times at knowing what it's telling us and organizing and synthesizing. But there's the so much of it. Report. It's so much of it. Right. We can't it's, synthesize The human it. capital reporting is a mess. Yeah. I mean, we just got into this a few weeks ago where there was a report that came out in February mm -hmm. on human capital metrics. Now, publicly traded companies are supposed to be disclosing this stuff. Yeah. And what, <laughs> what absolutely blew my mind, of the S&P 500 companies, only 23% of them are still reporting anything on culture. And of the 23%, 50% of those, what they are reporting on culture 
is an engagement survey that they do two times a year. Pulse, yeah, pulse survey. Yeah, so, and that's it. So they don't care what they don't care the culture in the first place. And but they never people did. are our most valued resource. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> As long as they're white correct. males. <laughs> to be consumed. As long as they're white middle-aged males, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then they're our most valued resources. That's right. And heterosexual. I mean, yes, yes. Don't forget that one. Don't forget that one. Just the, the hypocrisy of corporate America who says, first and foremost, that employees are the, the, you know, the, most, the most valued, right? And then there's like, get your ass back. Into, we, know that, we know what you want is what you want, but we don't care. You were, you were incredibly productive, but get back into the office, right? Uh, DEIB, the most important thing in the world. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go ahead and cut all the heads in DEIB, right? And diversity, equity, you know, inclusion. And don't you dare have a marketing campaign. Don't to you those start. People. Don't you start. <laughs> don't you dare put that <laughs> face on a Bud Light can. Yes. Yeah, the trans community doesn't need to know about that beer. They don't and drink say, beer. Come on, people. <laughs> they don't drink beer. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and a great campaign, but then Anheuser Busch folded like. And cheap they card did. table. They did, and that was on product. That wasn't even on on employees. So if they're gonna if they're gonna fold that quickly on product, they don't. They're not even thinking about employees. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They. It's, it's all just. It's all just fluff. What I'm really hopeful for is with AI is that we're not going to get more data, but we're going to make better decisions with it. And so we imagining the data. day when there's going to oh, be. Yeah. An AI agent sitting at the table in a boardroom and just look at board members and say, that is a terrible idea. That's the stupidest thing I've heard today. And here's all the reasons why based off of data, the data from Star Trek. Right. <laughs> right. But being able to refute a lot of things that I think that often get conflated as fact, but are strictly opinion or the ways that things have always been or the way that they've looked at data. Oh, yeah. I really hope that that there's going to be more objectivity that comes to it. It's got to be. We've got to get better than 23% of S&P 500 companies reporting anything on culture well, if you're going to say that you care about people. We can't even get economy right. We, the shit we talk about as rules and economy is basic theory. It has nothing to do with rules at all. Our economics 101 that you go through in school is total bull. It's set, it, there's, they're talked about as laws and it's total theory, right? We can't even get the thing that's most important to us right. And then we want to think about, oh, wait a minute, employees. Oh, okay, yeah. No. But at least we learned how to square dance in high school, that's right? That's a good point, yes, that's a good point. <laughs> at least you, in you square dance in high school, you had to have. Broke dance, square danced. I did it all. I did it all, baby. And he still does. I'll break out the running man right now. We're, we're live on camera. Well, well I, I just pull out the piece of cardboard. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Breaking two, electric boogaloo, the classic. Who else is hungry? Is it just me? No. I feel like the super fans sitting around the table, and I was Ruben. I could use a Ruben. 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 Ditka. Ruben. Time, time for food and another beer, kids. Ira. Jason, thanks for inviting us out. This is your What show. a pleasure. This no, this really is, thank you for having us. What this a pleasure. Okay. Rath Skeller, we're going to have to do it more often. Amen. Monumental meeting. Geek skis. And with that, Chad and cheese. another one <laughs> is in the, in books, the can. Baby. Another beer on the way. And a Reuben is cooking in the kitchen. Oh, we geez. out. We out. <laughs>